Hey guys, welcome back one last time to my fifth and final One Night in Cars on video. Uh, in this video, we're actually not going to do any more card reviews, partially because there are no more cards for me to review. Uh, but instead, we're going to talk about some of my personal predictions for things that are going to come out of the set and some of my opinions and some of my design insights about the set. So without further ado, shall we? All right, first off, my most likely disappointing card. Uh, the card that I think is most likely to be disappointing is Bookworm. Bookworm has all of the hallmarks of being a decent card, but I have this feeling that it's a little too slow and it just isn't quite good enough to force its way in or to redeem the decks that it would actually make its way into. Uh, for example, Dragon Warrior, they would have to cut something like Dragon and Crusher for this, and I think Dragon and Crusher is just too good for that tempo-oriented playstyle. I don't think a 3-6 that does Shadow Word Pain and is conditional can compare to a 6-6 six, six that is sometimes a 9-9 nine, 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 and requires no conditional uh, fulfillment. Likewise, I think Bookworm is going to be at its best in decks like Dragon Priest, but the problem is that Dragon Priest just isn't good enough, even with the addition of Bookworm, to really redeem itself just because of this power boost. So the card that is most disappointing in my eyes, or most likely to be disappointing, I'm going to go ahead and predict is going to be Bookworm. All right, conversely, from the most disappointing card, uh, my pick for the most likely Dr. Boom, which is to say the most likely card that we all think is mediocre that will actually be a blowout, is Cat Trick. Um, in my review of Cat Trick, I talked a little bit about why that word after in its, its text is particularly important, and I actually think you're going to see Cat Trick make its way into Face Hunter as a counter to board sweeps from classes like Warrior and Priest and Shaman and Handlock and, and shit like that. Cat Trick is really cool because it dodges those things and it keeps tempo and pressure up really hard uh, for you when it triggers properly. It's better than Bear Trap because it's harder to play around and constructed. Um, so I actually think Cat Trick is going to be the Dr. Boom of One Night in Karzon. It is being underrated severely. I think it's actually a really strong card and you're actually going to see a lot of it. It's going to have a huge impact on the metagame. Alright, my vote for the all right, my vote for the single most powerful card, most obviously potent card, is of course Menagerie Warden. It's a 5-5 five, five for 6 that can easily get you another 5-5 five, five or more worth of value in Beast Druid. It's kind of a no-brainer, honestly, uh, to say that this is the most obviously good card in One Night in Karazhan. Uh, it's going to be the card that takes Beast Druid from mediocre and fringe to a top-tier ladder-climbing competitive deck, because you are going to see game after game of turn, turn 5, Stranglethorn Tiger, turn 6, Menagerie Warden, blowout game over, no coming back from my like 10-10 of stats on turn 6. It's going to be very common, it's very powerful. At its worst, it still gets you, like, with Enchanted Raven, a 7-7 seven, seven for 6. It's a very strong card. Menagerie Warden, easily the most powerful card in the set. And the most fun single card uh, in One Night in Karazhan is actually, in my opinion, Violet Illusionist. I think Violet Illusionist is the sort of card that isn't very good, but inspires people to make decks around it and to experiment with it in kind of interesting ways. Um, and I think this is one of those cards that is good enough that you can play weird experimental decks with them and not just get your ass kicked over and over again. I think you're going to see times where a warrior does, you know, turn five full spain, turn six violet illusionist and something else and just goes whack, 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 whack and kills four guys and takes no damage and it's going to be super sweet. I think you're going to see games where uh, a Zulok does turn six, Violet Illusionist, Flame Imp, Flame Imp, Coin, Life Tap, and effectively heals themselves for eight, and just creates this crazy board. It's a very fun card, it's a very interesting card that challenges you to think about a different way to play it, and I really like that sort of thing. The most likely disappointing archetype is Discard Warlock. Um, this is a point of great contention within the community right now. Uh, a lot of people think that it has the potential to have this crazy explosive tempo that just totally blows out your opponent and they never chance to come back and they just get totally wiped off the face of the earth and obliterated on turn five. And that's true. There will be games with Discard Warlock where you just, you know, you do your thing, you do, you know, Impa Malkazar, turn two Impa Malkazar, Soul Fire, draw two cards, and summon a, a Silver or a Golem. There will be games where that happens. There will be a lot of games where you get stuck with Silver or Golem with no enablers, and it's a 3-3 three, 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 three for 3. It's not good enough, and you get your ass stomped. And that is why I think Discard Warlock is the most disappointing archetype, or will likely be the most disappointing archetype, is because it's extremely inconsistent. Consistent. It is very powerful, but it's not reliable. And reliability and consistency are what make decks truly viable. 
in a tournament capacity, in a ladder capacity. I think Discard will be a very fun deck to play. I think Discard will definitely be the sort of deck that sometimes goes bonkers, crazy bananas, and fucking kills the shit out of everybody. But I think most of the time, it's just going to lose because it's not consistent. Most likely new powerful archetype, unsurprisingly, this goes with my most powerful card pick, Beast Druid. Uh, Beast Druid just got Enchanted Raven and Menagerie Warden, both of which are excellent tools for enabling Beast Druid. It was already on the cusp of being good enough with Mark of Yasharaj, and now with those two new cards to fill in four more slots of the deck, I think Beast Druid's going to kick ass on ladder. I don't know if it's going to be tournament cali- caliber, but I definitely think that it's going to show up on ladder and really give people what's for with crazy value. You know, there's going to be a lot of turn one Enchanted Raven, turn two Mark of Yashara, swing for four, or trade with your Flame Imp or crazy shit like that. Uh, there's going to be a lot of turn five Stranglethorn Tiger, turn six Menagerie Warden, get blown out. There's going to be a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, I think you're going to see Druid of the Fang make its way back in. Uh, because because specifically of Enchanted Raven, but also because of the potential insane blowout with Ma- Menagerie Warden copying the 7-7 version of Druid of the Thing. Yeah, Beast Druid is on the upswing. You can expect to see a lot of it. And the most fun new archetype is Thief Rogue. Uh, with Swashburglar and Ethereal Peddler being added, uh, you now have Swashburglar, Undercity Huckster, Burgle, um, Gang Up, possibly Prince Malkazar, all of these cards can potentially enable something like Ethereal Peddler, and you can just play a bunch of cards that aren't yours, that are from other people's classes, and get tons of discounts and, and cool efficiency. It's very interesting. Um, it's not going to be viable. It's not going to be a ladder-winning deck. It's not going to be a tournament-winning deck, at least not in this very focused way. You might see Swashburglar in those kind of decks, but the deck that is just based around doing all of the stealing you can is just going to be fun. But damn, is it going to be fun. Best designed card is Prince Malkazar. Um, I think he has a very interesting design that encourages you to really put a lot of thought into what impact he has on your deck. I think he's a card that has the potential to be a breakout hit with people doing the right kind of tinkering with a fatigue deck. Uh, But he's also the sort of card that up front, his power and his weakness are not apparent. Uh, I think it's good design, both because he takes a lot of work to really comprehend and pull together and understand, but also because he opens the door to future cards that impact the, the structure of your deck and have beginning of game effects. And it's for that reason I think Prince Malkazar is, is definitely the best, the best design card in One Night in Karazhan. It's because he opens the door and he is a proof of concept and he basically says, hey, you know, we can do cards like this in the future. We can do other legendaries that add spells to your deck. We can do legendaries that give you extra life. We can do legendaries that change your hero power. We can do legendaries that, that change the turn order. We can do legendaries that do all sorts of crazy stuff. And all of that is possible because they put Prince Malkazar in and they said, we're willing to do this. We're willing to show this design space and open the door up. Conversely, the biggest design failure, Purify. Since I started doing the One Night in Cars on Card reviews, there's already been a basically unprecedented Designer Insights video specifically targeted on Purify, uh, in which uh, Ben Brode acknowledged that it just is really bad and that it's not intended to be good and that they really took a misstep and didn't feel the community's pulse in terms of the state of the priest class right now. Um, and that's all exactly correct. Purify is a design fail, not because the card itself is bad, but because the timing is utterly disrespectful and completely unconcerned with the opinions of the competitive community. Um, beyond that, I think it's actually just not good enough at being a bad good card. I know that sounds complicated, but you know, Purify is one of those cards that's supposed to be not very good, but you can find a way to use it and you feel really good when you do it and it's 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 wacky and weird. You like um Crazed Alchemist. <clears throat> it, Crazed Alchemist is the sort of card that's not very good, but actually got play because it has a weird effect and a unique effect that actually made its way in in a very creative way as a counter to Doomsayer for Zoo decks early on in this 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 current uh, standard cycle. This card just isn't good enough even when you exploit it to be that good. Uh, they really should have made it able to silence anything. That would have been the way to make it interesting, because then it becomes a unique effect for Priest. The reason that Iron B. Gowell is a problem is because he was a two-cost neutral silence effect that anyone could play. A two-cost draw card silence spell that doesn't leave behind a 2-1 body that is Priest exclusive would have not been a game-changer at all. It would have given Priest some form of identity. It was a perfect opportunity for them to say, 
priests are the ones who silence people. Silence is not an effect that everybody has easy access to or efficient access to, except priest. Priest is silence guy. And they didn't do that. It was a complete wasted opportunity. Purify is kind of an embarrassment, to be totally honest. It's a huge design failure. And finally, this one's totally subjective. My personal favorite card in 1-9 Karzan, it is Moat Lurker. Um, Moat Lurker is even more so than Cat Trick, the sort of card that if you find a cool way to use it, can be a total blowout and can be really interesting. And there are a lot of different interesting interactions with Moat Lurker. I mean, the obvious one is Moat Lurker, kill your guys, silence my Moat Lurker, boom, your guy's gone forever. Uh, there's triggering death rattles, there's eating things that are crazy buffed and letting them pop back out as much weaker form of themselves. There's eating your own uh, Barnes Dominions and then letting them pop back out as full-size versions of themselves. There's just, it's got a lot of the complexity of a silence effect, but with even more weird interactions added in and it's for that reason that it's my, easily my favorite card out of One Night in Karazhan. It was kind of a hard pick, I say easily, it was kind of a hard pick between this and Barnes but everybody else really likes Barnes and it's obvious that he's good, whereas with Moat Lurker I actually feel like it's not obvious all of the different things you can do with Moat Lurker. I mean, there, there, are, there's at least a dozen different modes and types of interaction. Well, I kill my guy to heal him, or I kill my guy to get him back, or I kill my guy to get his death rattle twice, or I kill your guy to unbuff him, or I kill your guy and silence my guy, or I kill your guy because he's da 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 There's a million ways to do it. Moat Lurker's a super cool card. All right, and that wraps up the uh, Dones Opinions uh, One Night in Karazhan video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think the most fun card, the your favorite card, the weakest card, the most disappointing card, how bad Purify is card in the comments below. Make sure that you like and subscribe as well to catch more content from me. There will be a lot more coming. I've got a nice little recording space now, so I'll actually make videos and stuff. Um, again, thank you for watching. Please check out the Play Together Project at twitch.tv slash the Play Together Project at Wednesdays at 8 p.m. EST. We play tabletop RPGs and talk about politics. We have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Play Together Project. You can click up there, I think, up, one of these two. Wherever the symbol is, when it, I think it'll be here. Click on it, and it's good. And I'm goodbye now. Good. I'm leaving. Okay, all right, cool. Bye.